make sure these are correct. All right. All right. So the purpose of these, purpose of the doing these live and not just uploading the VODs is um is so that if you have any questions throughout the duration of this at all, you can ask them. No question is too dumb or too smart. Every single question I, that you have, I'll do my best to, to, to attempt to answer. Any class can be positioning. How do, how do I aggress this? How do I push this? How do I defend this? Um, should I take this 1v1? Should I go for the medic here? Any question about any class or throughout the duration of this map in particular, um, feel free to ask because that's why we're doing this live, to, to answer questions live. So, This was the second map. Uh, of the grand finals that we played earlier this Monday on CB Steel, this was a this is like by far the closest map of the entire series we played. Um, so this will be really good representation of really bad mistakes, really good things to do, and then slight things here and there that are all going to either add or remove seconds from your final time when either pushing or defending. So looks like they're starting out on defense first. A lot of times teams are like only. We'll start out hold, hard holding B because A is really hard to defend on defense. Um, we see a, a heavy and a soldier and a sniper playing up top here. You don't really see a sniper starting on this left side earlier on. You usually see the sniper standing where this pyro is. Um, that's the only little thing I see differently, and that's how one actually was able to get space, so that's pretty creative coming out of here. Um, the spy gets taken down on A, so your, your spy on defense getting taken down on A means a lot because um, that means a lot of the information is going to be lost. So any any players that are here can be going for any any sort of play. So nothing super special right now. Um, both teams are about now 9 versus 9, so you want to be seeing some aggression come out from an offense on seal at this point. Um, you want to take an exchange kind of like upward like as early as possible. Um, because if not, you're kind of just wasting time. Shea playing super aggressive in this main is going to take me down, and Space is going to go for a, a god shot, and he's going to get taken down as well. So, with no separate to contend, that, mean, that means Shea can be playing aggressively once I'm dead. And that's what he, now he's going into the normal spot here. So now that, like, a second sack wave came in, uh, you really want to be see, you want, you, the first thing you want to do in steel is you need to clear up upper. So Zuki dying there is not going to be good there, and they, they're they holding upper very convincingly. Soldier and heavy, you're not getting contested at all. I think space went for a, uh, another sack there. We see the uber exchange come in, Chase dies during the super, and the gun goes down. This is really good. You want to be kiting here at this point? Because now that the no sepper and uh, no gun means that they can't stay here for long. Um, they did use uh, a little bit later than us. We see the re-aggression coming in. Evil goes down. The combo's hitting a ton of damage here. And this was a, this is a good re-push. Oh, okay, the flog. I remember this. He pops the flog. He jumps in. One, two, three, four. Oh, my God. We, uh, we knew they were on flog, and we called. I, I called, like, that good 10 seconds before they flogged that they were going to flog. But we were all out of position for that, and the reason for that is because if we backed up through main, we would have given up the positioning that we had taken in yard that we had fought for for the past 30 seconds. Um, and if we stayed in, that would have happened. So, it's uh, and that situation, if we even that we knew we had they had flog really early on, we probably should have just backed up towards main and given up uh, given up main until that flog was over. But be very aware of pyros going flog on a uh, on on defense. Exile gets. The Overextends for me. He dies early on, and the force comes out. That's four down from the side of defense. Whenever you this many, many players down, especially on B, you want to be backing up because uh, if the cyber cyber can be shooting from if they're sitting on here, they can look through this little hole in the window and they can sniper you if you try to leave through wishbone. So once you lose like players like that, especially with your demo and sniper, once they're dead on defense, you really just need to give it up on B um, because the spawns are 30 seconds plus 10 seconds that they cap, so you can have up to 40 second spawns on CP Steel. And you really can't be risking your life on defense. Your life matters so much on defense. So we have an uber advantage. Um, pushing in through Wishbone. One of these six. Oh, the six do get uh, Zuki in space. They shouldn't have peaked at the same time. And playing, I wouldn't see Exile. The biggest issue with that right there is that their their Exile and their combos playing aggressive on a Wishbone when they have a 40% disadvantage. You could not be playing that aggressive if you have a disadvantage. Holding Wishbone is a good idea for your combo on defense if you have an advantage or if it was even. But they had neither of those. So. Um, 
it was just a bad idea for Exile to be playing that forward. Again, the Flog is going to get us to force, and we're not going to get a ton out with this because we knew that they have spawns with this time. So now we're going to be resetting. They have a, a 70 out, and again, that Flog is kind of solo winning them that that uh, that push there. Gun is still up on defense, which means you can't get any cap time on E. It will go down eventually, so now we can get some pressure on the E point. Most of the time, you, you uh, win C over by having E and E and E being capped simultaneously while your combo is pressuring the C, so that they either have to fight you through Wishbone and die, or they have to uh, they have to go fight E. So the E pressure is coming out now. This is so that we can try to split their their players. Exile getting super aggressive. The use is going to come out. And we are completely out of position there. Wow. Yeah, the Uber repush from defense was amazing because we, we knew we had dissad, but we were actually playing way too close there. So that Uber is going to be really good from defense there. That was a really smart call to be taking that. If you know you have an advantage on defense, feel free to just take that in. Because if you have an advantage on defense and they're that close, those are just free kills. Because this map is so choke heavy. A solo on your demo on defense, if they're that close to the advantage, is going to be amazing. But I don't, they actually dropped three players, including their, their hit, their pick classes, and their pyro goes down. This is going to be... Wow. They just dropped five players. They're four up. Gun's going to go back up. So now when they're only four up on the side of defense, you want to be blitzing this. Gun goes down. They're still only four up. Okay. When they're four up, you should be bodying through Wishbone here. I don't know why I did not push this. Even Shay's there and their heavy's there, but the heavy was passive, which means I could have just bombed Shay. That was a fatal error. Not getting on to C when they are four up on defense is a fatal error. And now we just have to have to back up because I didn't take take that space. At any point on CB Steel, if their majority player is down, you always want to blitz it. Because their spawns are so slow that you can be blitzing it and getting pressure onto the next point right to that, because your spawns are on 30 seconds on defense. Not blitzing that on offense is a fatal error there. And because of that, now they get the, they keep holding C, and they have a slight advantage. Now the slight advantage isn't really due to the to due to not us not pushing. That's just due to us not building hard. But still, the odds are heavily against your favor if you don't abuse those players being down on defense. <clears throat> the flank and the engineer goes down from the side of defense, and that means we can get a ton of pressure on the E. They want to be fighting Wishman right now, or they need to rotate. Exile's getting locked off, so they have to rotate through spawn. Oh, they're actually running Wishbone here? Interesting. Oh, they're building this. They want to take this Uber. Exile dies before they get to Uber, though. Exile, they're five down, no demo. If we if we can kite here, they use through here on their Pyro. And this is not an amazing Uber. The Pyro can't really get anything on the point. This, he actually misses that score shot. He bombs on the point. It gets fell, fallen down. And now, see, this is this was a good time where we actually did abuse the fact that they were down spawners. On offense, if you abuse the fact that they're only like, like four up, you need to be getting cap time and blitzing things. And in that case, we that C push was absolutely atrocious because they were four up and we just gave it up. But as soon as they dropped five players coming in um, when they were fighting Wishbone, and we immediately responded with the knee cap, that's what you want to see happen on offense. On defense, I don't know how Rain get taken out. I think he lost on one v one to Eddie, and I think the scout, yeah, this, and the Pablo is peeking this in front of his demo. His Pablo should have never been here on defense. Um, and those pick, those flank classes are good for uh, offense because you can get cap time. But what really put the nail in the coffin was Exa dying during that, which means there's no gun fighting D and Exile walking prematurely into six without having an Uber. Exile dying here is probably the biggest thing why we won this round so fast. Because if Exile did not, wouldn't have died there. They would have been able to get that Uber for us and probably wipe us into Wishbone again like we saw earlier. So again, making sure that you have to prioritize your life more than everything. Getting greedy for frags there is is definitely not worth you dying. And that's that's why they lost or that's why that that um that's why this time was so fast. This would have been a what much worse time for us if uh, if Exile had to live there. Space goes sitting in the side when I show you earlier on. That's gonna make it so that I can play a bit aggressively. Oh! Yeah, this was... <laughs> I'm like... Just know that I shouldn't have died there. Just know that that was very bad for me to die there. <laughs> so again, we see the standard defense, um, except we see our stepper on the bottom floor instead of up top with our players, but besides that, a pretty similar defense coming up from both teams. Bonk coming in from Pablo, where we're going to take him down the behind it, which means... You know, every single pick is gonna is gonna allocate to more time on the clock. They're heavy bots through as well, which is interesting. Um, Pablo's gonna take down the telly. Um, that was good. That was a pretty good upper push. They they died plays early on, but they were able to. Uh, Pablo was able to bonk and get behind on the heavy and the, and the telly there, so that was good. 
S Cyber going down on offense again is going to mean that um, I can be playing, your demo can be playing aggressively into main if the Cyber dies on offense. But we're just kind of dwindling time and like, again, it's already one minute down. Every single second matters on the stopwatch, so I mean, and I guess any game mode in general on Highlander because everything's clock based, so one minute down already. The gun was called behind. It's a good idea to go grab the gun together if you got if they are playing behind. Um, but that's kind of a team by team basis sort of thing. And I, we just started his defense, and it's already a minute thirty down on the clock. Summer goes dropping. He actually gets me, and that's a really good sign because if the demo goes down on, at any point on defense. That's a thirty second spawn, and having no that ha having that little damage pressured out is so good for the offensive team. They're getting. They're like, if we say like a minute, that's about 300 damage that they, that every single time you kill a demo on defense, it's about 300 damage or about the minimum that you're denying. And that's a lot of damage to be having to heal back for your medic. So let's make, let's make your pushes way, way faster. Scout dying on offense is really good for a defense because that means their cap time is severely hindered. Eddie going in for a bomb to try to salvage on a Kalo is going to miss it. Having a soldier there and die on defense is okay. We get force. A force here on, on on offense is very very good. Um, they do exile does die during that. The pirate gets super low, but he actually lives. The same thing applies to uh, offense. I mean, having a demo die at any point um, on any any side is is pretty vital. Blue. The good thing that came out of this is that blue got the force, which means that they do have an advantage. River kind of feeds in there. And because we're so passive on, on uh, defense, you want to be seeing them take this B, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Oh, okay, yeah, so with this B, they really did not need to use it all for B, because B was already guaranteed there. But they weren't spy checking. Kalos playing way far farther back than his heavy, and him dropping there is detrimental. But amazingly enough, Shay was able to sit in the window and get the snipe onto me, which is, again, amazing on defense. Um, and look, you see how on this left side, our spawns were in three seconds, but they got delayed by another ten seconds because of the cap time. Every single time, every single time you an offense team caps, the defense team spawns get extended by ten seconds, which you make, which you make you have up to like thirty nine second spawn times, which is absolutely insane. So with the combo being down from us on defense, they want to blitz into E, which is an okay idea, um, but. The spawns do come up, so they do cancel. As soon as the spawns come up, you want to be canceling that E. I, they could have either blitzed C or E, and they opted to uh, to fight either. Which, you know, there's pros and cons to that. Uber comes in from defense. This Uber is kind of trivial. We're four up. We're literally only four up on defense, so this Uber was unnecessary. But we do clean up the things on C, and they they start feeding, so which is good. But now at two minutes forty on the clock, the offense seems going to start getting. The offense team usually starts getting desperate around the two minute mark, and we know that, so we're coming back to fight E here. Whenever you're playing defense and you're holding C, it's gonna be, it's up to your team to rotate from C and E constantly. So we notice them at E, their players, we stop the cap time, and that's what you need to do. Don't, don't, once you're on, when you're on defense, don't be chasing frags ever. Never chase frags on defense, because you need to be living. Once you get the cap time locked, then it's fine to, to stop and just slow down, because again, their objective is, is to get the, uh, the cap time, your objective is to live. They start fighting C again. Oh, we're two down on defense. We should not be fighting this. Oh, the Uber comes in from us on defense. Wow, only no one dies. The, the only kill we got with that Uber was Carson. That was a terrible Uber. When they have that much cap time on C and we're two down, no combo, I would, unless, I mean, we had an advantage, yes, but they kited very well. Eddie gets the kill on Kalos is an absolute salvage, but again, no matter how, like, e, again, any dying there is cool and all, you get the medic, but again, now that we're three down, we have no spam classes for the E point, which just proves, again, how much more your life matters than, uh, like, sometimes even advantages. We rotate to E, they get the C cap, and because the C cap comes out, which means these bridges are going to start overextending. The, this gun here, this gun is going to do so much work for them. If I die, if your demo dies at defense at all at this point, you're done. Then, oh, and they stabbed Arcee? This is amazing. Which means now, you're, the demo on defense has to both fight this gun and the cap time. I get back up, I grab the resub, and this will, they have so much cap time, cap is so close here. I come back, I got resub, have spend the heavy point, the point is number one priority. Heavy dies on point, now it's the gun. Now that there's nothing pushing the point, I can get the gun. Gun goes out as well, now we're in pristine position, but we are only three up now. Oh my god, dude. Rain dies on cap, and now, look how close the cap is. They have to be blocking it. Oh, this about... Wow. 
That point was two seconds from being capped, and we just had to bottle in. Every single second matters. 30 seconds left from, from offense, and we're five down on defense. Pirate bonding on point, a vaccinator. Vaccinator is a really interesting thing to be doing here. Callow dies, River dies, and now that they have to be bonding for point, and this is where your team even be playing aggressive. When they have to be bonding on point, your team can be playing aggressively and denying them. And look, you see that's happening here. They just keep bonding onto the point. They're doing so much damage. Wow. The defensive team won that. The re one of the biggest reasons why the offense struggled with capping that last time, because they had two minutes straight of offense time, and the biggest reason for that was because I lived. If I w if your de if your defensive demo dies at all during that, the game is over. Because without that damage, you will lose instantly. The what well, matter of the fact that one of the reasons that made that it made it so hard for me to to not die, like I needed to live there. If I died, would it would have been over. And one of the reasons for that is because of the gun. Having a wrangled gun means that if anyone peeks it, they're not only peeking a sightline, but they're also peeking a gun that's going to do 60 damage a second on you. In addition to that, they're getting good, very good cat time, and we saw how close that was. And if I would have lost that, we would have lost Seal, and that would have been the end of Grand Finals. Me living there was absolutely crucial, because the gun there is going to, what it does, that gun takes away spam from the point. So not only is there getting, is, is there cap time getting pressure that the demo needs to spam, but he also needs to spam that gun, because everyone else can't fight the point if that gun's alive. So living, living there as demo is very, very crucial. And again, that goes back to the fact that you living as demo on both offense and defense, defense of CBC is absolutely crucial. And that was only the first half. We're going to the second half right now. If you have any questions at any time about anything, any class um, at all over the course of this map on Steel, feel free to ask. This is, this is the closest one of the series, and it was probably the most fun to play. So if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them. This one's going to be a really good one to discuss, because I'm pretty sure um, Rewind blitzed this round. Standard defense coming out right now. Nothing super fancy, both meds on Uber. Rain on Pain Train. It's a good idea for you to just be going pain train if he's going to get cap time. Standard top spot, most top league to play up top here. Uh, River is going to go down into some passive spam. Nothing, nothing uh, special on A. Shade goes down, that's going to start some aggression on defense. I can start peeking this a little bit. As a demo, if your sniper goes down on offense, you can be peeking that. Evil is going to get a good pick on a, on a, any that, getting us, and again, any picks on offense that you get onto their defense team is going to be amazing. So getting a soldier there, especially on the start of B, where a soldier is really, really powerful, and he has a banner, that's going to be amazing there. They're starting to take upper here. They're taking upper very fast, which is something that I like. Um, that Taking upper super fast was a really good idea for them, because they had they just sacked um, playing upper. So now that they have upper control, they can be exchanging soon. As soon as you have upper on the offense side, you want to be taking this exchange. Scout going, scout the flank going down is going to halt cap time or any like aggression on E, which is going to make this B push a bit harder. Exit going down as well is also going to hinder that. So what seemed a pretty good, what they can go pretty fast on, just off them dying is going to be hindering them a bit. Evil is in the position to sap, and we should be seeing an Uber coming for the next five seconds. Uber comes in main, Evil saps the gun, the gun goes down, the Uber comes in for the defense, and now from an offense side, you want to back up and repush during this. Pyro goes down. We had we didn't see the sniper go upper during the super, which is kind of interesting. They they repush main. Eg Exile dies now that they're now their combo's demolished and they have no they have no demo. Oh, but Cal gets a Saul on Jacob. Now they have a 50% advantage, so we should be cutting here. Let's see what E's looking like right now. During the course of all of this B fighting with the combos, it's a good idea for your flank on offense to be trying to just keep annoying them on E, getting cap time or flanking them with, with Wishbone. Because getting that constant like, uh, annoyance and aggression into Wishbone is going to is gonna split their combo, and that's going to allow your combo to roll in through uh, their main lobby here. Alert. 
So this should be a guaranteed cap on B right now. We should be all the way out. Hello, Beef Mountain. Oh, Shay gets the snipe. Where was Shay at? I think Shay was in this window looking at this sightline. Um, again, we see Callow going down on defense or on offense from Jacob again. Again, I think this is our, you see River and Exile playing too fast, and it's only Carson that's with his medic there. So that was crucial as well. We got some instant C cap going on. Okay, this is one of the biggest mistakes. They have a level three egg egg They have a level three on C. It's wrangled as well. If we take this fight C, it's going to be terrible. Cyber dies. So here's the trivial thing. Watch this Uber play out. The sni we used after our sniper died, which is going to make our Uber worse anyways. We come with this push and we dropped four players with it because of that gun. As we saw in the first round, Exa almost solo-handedly won them that first half. Just by a hair they lost. But in this case, we took that Uber into a level 3 wrangled gun, and that gun had to go down, or else that post for us would have been terrible. Regar even, it did go down, but the post for us was still terrible. As you can see, we're only two up. And wipe, almost full wiping a team on offense, um, like on from the offense perspective into a defense team, is amazing. Because now they can be blitzing this cap time with me and an engine with no engineer. With no demo to be fighting E, this is going to be really, really hard. Especially once they're combating 7. We see a banner come out from defense, but that's not going to do a ton, I guess, on Uber. And using an Uber here is really good, a, a really good idea, because what this is going to do is, this isn't going to get a ton of frags, but what it is going to do is it's going to deny. And having denying the defense team from getting any kind on, onto, or getting de from defending E is going to be the best thing you want to do. And because of that, because of that one Uber that we took on C, we're going to be getting rolled at about 3.30 here. 3.50. That one Uber through C lost us this half, solely. So the biggest ideas of that Uber is one: if you want to use and fight somewhere, go fast because if this gun's not if this gun's still building, then it can't be wrangled. And if our sniper is still alive, then that's good. The fact that we used after our sniper died and after the gun was wrangled was fatal. Second thing to do is you need to be scouting out Ubers. You usually do this in sixes, but especially in Highlander, we have these windows here. So if you're standing here as a demo you, or any class, you can be seeing like the gun right here. So if, if you see a, a wrangled gun there, and even if you have an ad, if they have five players second this point with a wrangled gun, you cannot fight that, even if it's a nine versus nine, because that's just too much damage that you need to be putting out. That It is impossible to do that much damage in that short amount of time, especially with the pirate denying you and like like projectiles that are going to like splash you around. You cannot do that. It would have been just better to back up to the lobby there. That one push fr in from us defensively into C, what lost us this half. So on offense again, finding the spy on offense is a really good idea. Oh, he does get tagged. Evil dies. Having your spy die on defense again is, is really good for offense because that means they're losing so much information of any sort of plays that we can be doing on offense. Carson going down as well on defense is really good because that means upper is going to be really easy to take. With only once one person would be, be at the soldier that's going upper, upper should be blitz now with no heavy. Oh, Pyra is playing upper. Interesting. Carson's gonna be up about three seconds, and it's unfortunate that we didn't abuse this upper. He's gonna be back up now. He should be able to take the telly. The telly's still up, and because the heavy was back up so fast, he's gonna. He should be able to get up top here. Not abusing off that heavy being alive is is a pretty major error because this this B push could have been pushed about 20 seconds faster if we would have abused that heavy being down for so long. And now we need to wait for the for the exchange. We don't have a ton of time to be waiting for the round for the exchange here. We just need everyone to be. Oh, we just used straight in. We use it. There was no sap on the gun. I feel like this this Uber was a bit forced and premature. We we could have like we we could have afforded to be waiting at least 15 seconds for Jacob to get the sap. Their gun goes down. Ng goes down. I'm kind of caught here. I'm gonna die to the devil and pyro. So from offense, dying is okay. Your spawns are still pretty long on offense. They're 10 seconds each, but we can be seeing some really fast aggression. We actually didn't take upper. Carson's still an upper. Carson's still being an upper is probably gonna win them this B push. Yeah, arrow. That's a good arrow. Oh, and Bandy does. It's going to scatter our spawns. So rather than having an instant repush from us offensively, with our with our flank being scattered, this is going to make this push pretty bad if we try to re take this repush. Rain dies. That means we can be taking up here. No soldier in upper means that they only have a heavy in upper. Abuse the fact that they only have one upper. Good. Now we have upper control. Jacob dies. That doesn't matter a ton here. Uber's going to be even... Exile dies. That's major. 
Once your demo dies at any point on CP Steel defense, you can be blitzing and evil dies that is three on the side of defense. Now is blitz this. The gun needs to go down and now they're just collapsing. Shay dies, Exit dies, and gun goes down. That's so there are four down from the side of defense. You can be like hard blitzing this and sending them here. They use Don't do this. They used in Chinatown, Pablo, and Carson, and River all died during that Uber. When it's that close, when it's that close of a, um, of a game, what, with a minute 30? A minute 30 is more, that's the more, a minute and 30 is three times the amount of time you need to be capping the E point. Gun goes down fast. As a demo, where am I? I think I was a spawner. If I was alive beforehand, I could have been at these spawns and locking them out. And if I was actually alive, like you see me doing this, if I was alive earlier on, I, we, we might have actually won this half because that uber that they took in, into B was absolutely detrimental. They do end up winning this half, but you see, you, you see how bad it was of an idea for uber right to be using there. They were only five up and the, and the ubers were even. If they would have backed up and just went to C and then held either wishbone or spawn, they would still be having uber at this time because they would have been no bridges down and they would that would have been a guaranteed uh, like like win for them. But them using there ran the huge risk of them losing. They're still going to win this as you, as you see now. This game's already over. And the biggest reason why we actually lost that after they had a terrible Uber on defense is because I died. Me dying there was absolutely, like, I think it was th that Uber killed me. And that was that was the really good thing that came out from that Uber. If I would have lived, I would have been able to jump at the spawns immediately with a minute and 30 left on the clock. And we would have had at least a times five on the point while the stickies were, while the spawn were, were sticked. So, both teams having major errors. Me, me getting, I don't think I got dropped. I think it was just for post. Their pirate bo the river botted during that. So having me die there on offense was absolutely detrimental, which again pr proves the fact that how powerful demo is on this map. This is probably the best map for demo in Highlander because of how tricky it is. Um, but we also see how bad of an Uber that was, and you should never be taking an Uber that close when you're four down on defense and it's even, and there's a minute 30 on the clock. Do not even run that risk at all. So that was the second half. The score is now 1-1, and now we're going to be going to the third demo. Um, so again... I'm live streaming this so that the VOD will be uploaded later, but at any point during this, if you have any questions, um, that's what live streaming this is for. Any class, any questions about anything, positioning, aggression, like defense, what fights should I take, what fights should I not take, should I go for the medic here? Any questions at any point in this is uh, what live streaming this is for. Um, and I might do Swift Auto later on. I might do I might reserve Swift Auto, which is the final map of Grand Finals, will be tomorrow, um, but at least for the time being, we're going to be doing uh, only CP Steel today. And uh, we did we did uh, Borneo yesterday, which is the first night of Grand Finals. You can go look back at the VOD for that. Uh, I'll upload, the, upload that on YouTube eventually, so that if you have any questions, you can you can ask those questions on the YouTube comments um, instead of being live, asking them live like we are now. So scores one on on Steel. It all goes down to this. If uh, Rewind, which is on currently on Red, win this, they take the first set of Grand Finals. Um, and if we win, we will be taking this this map, and the maps will be one one because uh, Rewind is currently one uh, up one map right now. Nothing too special. Defenses are standard. Offenses are standard. They get Jacob early on, and Oblivious feeds in. He actually got Kalo really weak there. That was a really good sack for Gun being up. Um, but you know, sacking early on is fine. Nothing, not a ton you can do. Um, only thing to note about sacking on CP Steel is that the spawn times are actually pretty long for offense as well, about 10 to 13 seconds for offense, so be wary if you're sacking on offense, because as we saw last half, one player dying and having just a 13 second spawn is pretty detrimental. Jacob dies there. Um, it was a sack. I, I questioned that sack. There wasn't any aggression during it, so I don't know if that was really necessary. It's not going to matter too much, though. And now we're just seeing a standard defense. So at this point, you're cut, we're, now that you're doing nothing, uh, you want to be seeing the first thing you want to do in offense is you need to be taking upper, and that's what we're doing here. We decided to, to send a ton of players up and blitz it. So we're going to get jump, jump down. Carson's going to be overextended, and he... Oh, he actually lives. Bandit doesn't kill him. And space dies. Wow. Carson getting arrowed a ton there. Like, Carson's been getting a ton of arrows by Kalo. Kalo's been the clutch meister of uh, this upper hold for them because he's been hitting so many arrows on the Carson. The shade going down is good. The use actually comes in. I don't know what force Nurse Nurse is at 50 health. And they get the force, and now they don't have to use on defense. This is very, very good defensively. I have no idea what hit Nurse for 100 because Nurse was like over in this area. It might have been like River or Shade going for Godshot. 
but Nursey getting forced there is absolutely amazing for defense. And now is, is an appropriate time to be seeing sacks. But they just lose three players. It plays it over. We see Chinatown's playing so passive that he's not going to be arrowing, like, tank arrowing Carson. And we see that Carson isn't necessarily the one that's doing all the work in upper. It's Kalo Karai. And you see that once Kalo Karai has to back up because they know that they have an advantage, they lose upper instantly because he's not getting those arrows on a Carson. So even though they had an advantage, Uber's going to come back. And now that they flog in on River, it's going to denied. This is really good denial from Obliv. And he gets launched into the air. That, that crits flogged Uber solo. Getting denied by Obliv is absolutely crucial. And now that we see, even though they had an Uber ad advantage the entire time, Losing them upper and losing three players and then taking a bad solo that gets denied is going to absolutely like be amazing for them. How about, about coming from River? This gun's actually amazing. I didn't even realize we had this gun in the match, but having a gun offensively. Ooh, they caught the force. Wow, okay. At this point, from an offense, once you get the force like that, you should just be get it guaranteed a B cap and then reset. They are four down, which is amazing from an offense perspective. You, you want as many pick as possible, but getting that force on a nurse is really, really good for defensively. If you're just joining us, um, again, we're doing this for questions. If you have any questions about any class at any point during the uh, duration of this match, this is the last half we did the other two halves a few minutes ago. Um, feel free to ask. That's what this is for. This is what's the point of doing this live is. We see them playing aggressive. They know they have an advantage on Wishman. Last time, the defensive team, Rewind, had a, an advantage on Wishman. They took it in, which is pretty interesting. But evil going down means that they're losing information. So as long as, as your combo can lock down Wishman and get Captain on E, you can kind of pressure them in. The use comes in. This gun, again, Scratchy's gun doing a ton of work. That one gun denied them and it levitated their power the entire time. So this uber advantage turned into a 90% disadvantage for the defensive team. And they lost Shay and Rain during that. Both classes are very important on Seal. Rain because of the, the spam and the banner, and Shay because Cyber is just the, the best class. So with this advantage, we can be doing two things. If their combo stays in a wishbone on, a, uh, in, on defense, your team can be rotating to upper. Oh, we do do this. So upper is a decent idea because that means you're wrapping. We go, we try to blitz this. The Uber comes in. Now they're caught in the wishbone, and they're backing up. So we can just go to C. If their combo just stays in wishbone, we have an advantage. Just go to C, and that's exactly what we're doing. If they're not coming out of wishbone, that means they're locked in here, and they have to come into us. We're playing role, role reversal at this point. They have to come into us from wishbone if they get locked in and fight us from C from a low ground. But we do take that that fight, and now they're they are seven down on the side of defense. Why is Carson the best heavy in the game? Um, I think, I think Carson's up there. I don't know if he's the best heavy in the game currently. Um, I would say him and Bobby both are, are pretty even, both for different reasons. Bobby being Kresnik. Three down for the side of defense. Um, but the offense, we have a 40% advantage. So this, e mm. let's see here. Okay, we're going a bit too fast. Oh, Nursey actually dodges that? Oh my God. Okay, Nursey living there was... Very crucial. As you can see from the offense, we, we blitzed it a bit too fast. We tried to go too fast with this offense, and with this much of an advantage, going too fast is going to be very, very crucial if you want to if you want to win this. If you go too fast, your player's going to die too fast, as we just saw. And with an advantage like this, every single time your player dies, it's going to uh, it's going to lessen the amount of advantage you have because it's going to take longer for you to rotate. Looks like we opted to back out of Wishman because we we're getting nothing, just getting stuff by Sam. We decided to rotate to A and try to take the fight lobby. Uber comes in lobby. We still have 20% advantage. Two going down. I'm, I should not be this slow during this. He got, Nursey got two saws during that. Carson goes down. And now that they're four down and Kala died during that, this should be an absolute blitz from us on offense. Exile is staying way too aggressively on defense. He's, he is going to back up. And now we're just going to be taking this like, methodically. We don't need to be rushing this. We already have the players, the picks that we want, and the advantage that we want. We can be taking this slow. Exile is going to die. River's going to die. But it's now four from that side of defense. And now we can just be splitting the, the fights here. Whenever you, have a, whenever you have a ton of players down on defense and you're pushing offensively, it's a really good idea to be splitting your, uh, your cap time. So some players on D, some players on E. Some players like to have their combo D or their combo D and their flank E, vice versa. It's up to your team's place on how you want to do that. Um, Pablo ran in and actually got Nursey during that fight, um, which uh, which would be good in any other instance, but when you're only four up on defense and your spawns are super delayed and the D is capped, Nursey dying there from the scout is not a big deal, especially considering the fact that Pablo's on a 30 second, 30 second spawn wave there. So now they're fighting from Wishbone. You can either fight from Wishbone or from D. Either one's uh, fine, but the, the big issue with fighting from Wishbone is that you're all sitting in a, uh, a huge choke. And as you see, with seven players dying instantly on defense, Nursey dying there didn't mean that much. And now they're only one up, and that's a full wipe from defense. And we just see how how hard it is to fight defensively from Wishbone because of how much of an insane choke it is for both the Soldier and Demo. And that's going to be a 6-18 time. And the biggest reason why that, that time was so low is because of that E-push. We saw, we saw the offense team um, just fight so fast into lobby. 
Um, and getting those like four, five, six picks onto them defensively on last is going to be amazing to split your cap times. And getting that D cap time is going to force a combo to either go through this wish mode, which is a choke, or go through D to here to a window, which is a sight line. So they opted to go wish zone, and they took the uh, the cons that were associated with wish zone, which was with his like it being a huge choke. So six minutes is still entirely doable from an offense side. We saw them get a, like a, a four minute time last half, so this is more than doable. It's all about um, the defensive team again not dying and not making those critical mistakes and not not taking that Uber into C, which I'm gonna actually get a point out because um, we had the opportunity to this or half, and I'm gonna show you why we didn't and how much it benefited us from last time. If you saw us um, a few minutes ago, we took this Uber in through here and it was terrible. I'll show you what we did this time around. We had the opportunity and why it was much more successful. Standard defense, something special. Um, weapons, no crits. Uber. Shago is down, that means every single time you have sniper dies offensively, your demo can be getting a real sub if it's appropriate. Banny goes down on offense, I don't know what he's doing. Um, Banny was actually, uh, I think it might have been in a scrim. Banny was hiding up here on this pipe and he got stuck. And uh, <laughs> he was just derping around and he died eventually. Traps kill, kill a pyro. Exile dies to the trap. Actually, oh, that I didn't even see that trap. If Cal would have walked through that, that would have been good. But no demo on offense is going to halt this push a ton because that means they're not going to get a ton of mage onto upper here. So exile dying means that there's not a ton of spam coming from upper. And again, we see Nursey doing that arrow tank on Zuki. It's not necessarily Carson that's winning them these upper holds of river just botting in there. I don't. He, he had he had every single opportunity back up there. Interesting. They took their sniper into uh, into series. I've never really seen that been done before. Uh, XL, I guess not a ton. Shay going to be dying there for that for playing super aggressively. I don't know if that's a worthy trade for them. Separate dying on offense means a ton. So now we're just be playing the waiting game, and that's already a minute 20 down on the clock from them offensively. Five minutes left of them to deploy people shooting. The Uber comes in. Um, this Uber is a bit trivial. Ooh, Exile. Oh, what? Kalo drops Exile on that Uber. That is terrible. Egg, so that push already was kind of iffy because they had just had their spawners, and their spawners would have taken at least five seconds to walk through this main here and be there for the post, which wouldn't have been guaranteed. But Kalo flashing and giving that Uber to River means that Exile was not doing that, and I debt during that. Having your demo die on that push on a B is absolutely, uh, that's really, really crucial. But we did back up during that, so the one thing they did gain from the super was space. And now Exo can get super aggressive and Exo, or then Shay has a sideline into main. Papa going down means we, we're going to start cap time. Evil going down means there's no information. Exile going down means there's no damage. And now it's a 6v6, and from a defensive side, this is an advantage for us. Because they have to come into us. Shay goes down means we can get a really aggressive here. And Ring goes down, nice space goes. Shay goes down, so now the Uber comes in. This Uber was really unnecessary. Shay was dead, and I Mercy, from the looks of it, wasn't that wasn't that weak. It might have been me that was weak. I didn't really check the health that far back, but that Uber. Oh, Kalo died during that. Okay, that Uber would have been um, kind of questionable. It wouldn't have been super detrimental, but it kind of questionable if Kalo didn't die. But Kalo, I think I bombed a main. Kalo dying there is very good. Which is going to put the advantage back to our hands, but with this, with their couple being this aggressive and us having an advantage, you don't want to overwhelcome your stay. And as you see, I do. Yeah, as I should have. See, I, I'm playing this alone here. As soon as I was back up here, I didn't notice that my place was backed up. I should have backed up instantly. Me repeating that for like the fourth time is, is very, very bad. And again, having no damage, having your demo on a 30 second, 30 second spawn, even, even though you have a 20% advantage, having your demo die in general is very, very bad, no matter how much of an advantage you have on defense. Three minutes left is again more than doable from from an offense perspective. So now what you want to be seeing is you need you need the defensive team to be living in every single scenario. The offense team is trying to blitz third here and watch. Well, this is a really good example of what just happened. Oh, this will come in later on. They try to take it aggressive through wishbone. It's going to get halted. So that's just a normal normal just defense. Shay going down. Shay going down means that. Um, I can be, anyone who goes on E can be pressuring aggressively, um, because there's no separate windows, so you don't have to be fearing that. Um, Pigloss is going down, this Jacob, or Demento going down during that means that we have no information, so we don't know what, what, what their split is, like what their E to C split is right now. Uh, looks like we're opting to go to E and try to fight this here. Um, there's only one power capping right now, and River ref reflecting this is really annoying, but he should jump off eventually. Again, we see the same gun coming from Exa. 
Um, rain goes down, which is a good spam for us. Azuki going down means it's no chip, and having no chip on this is means a lot. Gun goes down really early on, and that gun going down very early on is very, very crucial. If that gun would have stayed up, as we saw the first round, they would have been able to get a ton of more cap time. And watch you see here. I, I was a little bit late, but we were sitting right here, and we were hesitant. We were debating on whether we should go C, and I said no. We're, we're not going to fight this, because last time we were here on C, and we fought this, we lost. Two minutes left, and that, that was the correct call. If I would have Ubered in through here, and it was even, they would have had the better Uber, because their Uber would have stopped us, and we our combo probably could have wiped. But because I called that push off on C, it means that we can sit in lobby with an even Uber exchange, and they have zero cap time on E. And that was absolutely crucial, because I would have taken that fight, we probably would have lost this round instantly. Shay going down is a really good pick from Jacob, and now they, they we got the force in. Egg, it's a solo one exile. Nursey gets... Oh, but Nursey doesn't use! Nursey not using this amazing. Now we have a full Uber ad on defense, and they only have a level 1 white gun. So the biggest thing here is whenever teams have full Uber ads on defense, they what's happening right now, they're giving them too much cap time. The Uber comes in, Shay goes down instantly, River's denying a ton, and he's going to die eventually. And now we just see an absolute collapse. Only three from the side of offense. And that was played very, very well. It was getting a little bit skeptical with getting so much cap time. And that's what I was saying earlier, that if you have a full uber advantage on defense, you should not really get let them have that much cap time. But um, we the rotate was worth it. We wiped about seven of them. And we do have an advantage because Kalo Kirai died during that. So now it's 30 seconds, this is, or 45 seconds, and this is still very doable. With, with about, like, a fourth of the cap still available, this is still, like, of, you know, possible for the defense. Space goes dying means a bunch, because that means there's no one sniping the point. Um, Shay dying means there's no separate on offense, and now it's a 6v6 right now. Blue actually has the advantage. I'm still alive, I'm starting start to spam the point. Pablo dies to spam. Nursey gets a saw on the rain. Is Nursey died during that? No, she didn't. And, oh, look, look at this. This was crucial. Look how much they clumped up on point. My spam and Eddie bombed in from from Wishbone. Wish is Eddie just got like eight or like like three kills there, and now we're just seeing the cleanup from Banny. And Eddie getting that flank combined with my spam was was what won us this round and ultimately this map in about three seconds. The biggest issue we saw there is if you know if you remember from last round. Let's see. Um, if you remember on the second round of CP Steel, um, what what made their what made their push so good onto last and have that super blitz time was because they allowed, they had their combo walk across E when these bridges were up and sit up top. And having their combo sit up top means that we can't free fight from this. And instead of doing that, they had their entire combo, so their medic, heavy, demo, and pyro, all and baby, I think soldier, all sound at the exact same point. And it's because these sound at the exact same point, they're eating the exact same damage. So when they took all that damage from me, they started to retreat from Wishbone because they still had time to back up, reheal, and repush. But Eddie was behind during this, and he was able to clean up all that damage and just Bandy coming from afterwards and. That was, that's what ultimately won us that round. So, again, not taking that exchange on that third round into C is ultimately what, um, one of the, one of the big reasons why we, um, why we won that. So that was.